Hello and welcome to the video course called Algebra. This is a new video series here on the channel, which nicely puts my other courses closer together. Of course, you might know, Algebra is a huge part of mathematics and it can mean a lot of different things. Therefore, let me tell you that here we have an introduction to Algebra in a video course. So you don't need a lot of prerequisites here to understand the first videos. However, since this is a very abstract topic, I would say this is not one of the easiest courses I have. Still, you might know the topics we learn here are important and useful for other parts of mathematics. Okay, and here you see, the only prerequisite we have is that you know the stuff in my Start Learning Mathematics series. In particular, you should be familiar with the construction of the number sets. Because that's something we will immediately generalize in our algebra setting. Okay, here you also see my other basic video courses are not required and are more or less on the same level. However, they are less abstract and therefore I would say it's still helpful to have some knowledge of calculus and linear algebra. Indeed, this helps to understand why we even ask some questions in algebra. But of course, your personal taste could be completely different than mine. Maybe you don't like this concrete level in calculus, but really like this abstract level in algebra. In this case, you did the correct choice watching this video series here. And this is a good point in the video to thank all the nice people that made this video course possible. As a supporter on Steady, on Patreon or here on YouTube, you make it possible that I can create a lot of maths videos. And you might already know, as a reward, you get PDF versions, quizzes and exercises for all the videos. Okay, then the next question might be, what can you expect of this video course about algebra here? And indeed, this is easy to answer because I have a nice summary. We will first talk about groups, then about rings and in the end about fields. In fact, you might already know all these concepts here because they were needed and defined when we constructed the number sets in the Start Learning Mathematics series. A very important example of a group would be the integers together with the addition. So we need a set together with an operation and most crucially all the inverses have to lie in the set. In other words, we can generalize this concept of the integers and talk about an abstract group. And then it turns out that this new concept is more powerful and can do way more than just describing numbers. Now, on the other hand, the integers are also a good example for a so-called ring. There, the integers need more structures Namely, besides the addition, we also need the multiplication. Hence, a ring is just a set together with two operations, where for the one operation we don't need all the inverses in the set. In fact, by having more inverses, we reach the concept of a field. And there, the typical example would be the real numbers with all the calculation rules you know. Therefore, a field generalizes all these rich calculation rules you have for the real numbers in an abstract setting. Okay, and at this point I should tell you that in this video course we will learn that all these abstract concepts have nice applications. And they go beyond just calculating with numbers. For example, if you want to solve a Rubik's Cube, it turns out that all the moves together form a group. The crucial part here is that every move you can do can be reversed. And this guarantees that the Rubik's Cube can be solved if you started with a solved one. However, one interesting fact here I can tell you is that this group is not a commutative one. This means in contrast to adding integers, here the order of the operation matters. Now, on the other hand, we also get applications on a more abstract level. In particular, this whole algebra concept tells us about solutions of equations. For example, you might want to have the solutions, the real or complex ones, of this equation. You see, it's a polynomial equation with the Cree 5. 
And now with algebra, we can show that we have at most five different solutions of this equation. However, our abstract algebra concepts here also show that we cannot have a general solution formula for these solutions. More precisely, it means that the solutions cannot be expressed by using the integers, roots and the basic calculation symbols. This is something that is indeed possible if the degree here is less or equal than 4. However, at degree 5 this breaks down, which algebra or more precisely Galois theory shows. Now, in order to check this interesting fact, let's put this particular equation into Wolfram Alpha. And there we see, Wolfram Alpha is not able to give more than just an approximation of the solutions. And indeed, we also see more, the graph of this polynomial is given here and we have only three real solutions. The other two of the possible five are now found in the complex domain. However, the result here is that for none of these complex solutions we have a formula that is expressed with roots. Now, at this point you might criticize me and tell me that in Wolfram Alpha you find this button exact forms. But after pressing it, we still don't have a formula with just roots because there are very complicated functions involved. And at this point it might be helpful to compare this to an equation with degree 4. So let's change the power to 4 and let's see what we get. Again, we just get approximations, but now let's see what the exact forms are. And there you see, now we can use integers, roots of higher degree and just the basic calculation operations to formulate this solution. And indeed, this formula with roots works for each of the four solutions. And the reason why we have this nice fact, the Galois theory will tell us later. But before we do that, we will first start discussing groups. So let's do that in the next video and I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye. Mm -hmm.